This show is made possible with a grant from Mom and Dad Mutual, always willing to help. Ow! Mom! This is a test of the emergency broadcast service. For the next 16 minutes, this show will conduct a test. This is only a test. Welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that dares to ask such hard-hitting questions as... Who made the egg salad sandwiches? In case you weren't paying attention before, we're looking at that needlessly terrifying and largely ineffective system that's made us jump sky-high out of our chairs for the past 60 years. Today, we celebrate the first, and probably last, salute to civil defense broadcasting. Now, given the government's unintentionally hilarious track record in the past year, it seems only just to give our salute to civil defense communications. For those who actually have a life, unlike yours truly, you may not have caught the first attempt at a full-on National Emergency Alert System test, or EAN test. This occurred back on November 9th of 2011 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At this particular moment, any good red-blooded TV watching or radio listening American was treated to, well, something simultaneously funny and terrifying. The bulk of TV viewers got the EAS in a feedback loop, with the alert message repeating on itself every couple of seconds, by the end creating a total cacophony. Wow. Direct TV customers were treated to the soothing sounds of Lady Gaga's paparazzi in place of the alert message. I'm a streaker. I'm 300 pounds, painted blue, and apart from the cleats, I'm completely naked. sit up and take notice. Most radio listeners were treated to the usual bookends of electronic noise, but with no message in between. In fact, some stations were stuck with up to four minutes of silence. And a lucky few missed out on the EAS altogether. In Colorado, from whence this show came, on the morning of Wednesday, April 14th, 2012, there was to be a statewide EAS tornado alert test. On at least one radio station, namely KHOW, it never happened. With that, we all still have our regular weekly and monthly tests to disrupt our favorite shows and violently remind Where us at 3 a.m. that you forgot to turn off the TV. Oh, no. The first form of civil defense broadcasting was known as Conelrad short for Control of Electromagnetic Radiation. Such a happy thought. 
Established in 1951, Conelrad was the first system of civil defense broadcasting in the U.S. Now, let's step in the old Wayback Machine. It is midday, April 17, 1959. Today marks the 6th annual Operation Alert Drill, in which people across America, well, a fair amount anyway, take part in a nationwide civil defense drill. Now, if you already have a radio on, you're being forced to change the station to either 6.40 or 12.40 a.m. Doesn't matter which. And FM listeners, too bad. Now, once you arrive at the proper frequency, you find Groucho Marx telling you how to survive a nuclear blast. It's true. No, we haven't slipped into a David Lynch film, although I wish we had. This is real. During these 15 minutes, we get to hear PSAs from the likes of Connie Francis, Johnny Cash, and... Boris Karloff! No one can guarantee the survival of every home during a nuclear war. We also hear, well... More PSAs from generic announcers grimly telling us how to achieve our best chances of survival in a nuclear attack. Oh yeah, and we get musical interludes from the Air Force Symphony Orchestra and the Air Force Band. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm in the direct blast area, I'd rather have lovely Miss Conchetta serenade me to my ultimate doom. Now, having said that, if I'm in a surrounding area, I'll take some Johnny Cash. I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. It just depends. Conelrad was discontinued in 1963. Conelrad was replaced with the Emergency Broadcast System, or EBS. Unlike Conelrad, the EBS was ultimately expanded so it could, but usually wasn't, also used for weather watches and warnings, setting the stage for almost every civil defense broadcast since. Okay, I said almost. There was this one time when the EBS was activated for what was thought to be a national emergency. So with that, we make our next stop. The date is Saturday, February 20th, 1971. It's just after 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're grooving to the latest single from the Partridge family. Every Saturday morning, the folks at the National Emergency Warning Center at Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado, would send out a test of an EBS directive to all radio stations throughout the country. These tests would be received over each station's teletype machine and would include that week's predetermined code word and, if needed, any further instruction. Now, a quick note. In those days, radio stations would receive a pair of monthly lists of secret code words, one for tests, one for emergencies, to determine the authenticity of an EBS transmission. Now, this time, the day's emergency code word was sent out by mistake. Now, thankfully, many stations refused to air an emergency broadcast until they knew why they were airing it. But there was certainly no shortage of stations that dutifully issued an alert anyway, even if they had absolutely no clue why. This station has interrupted its regular program at the request of the United States government to participate in the emergency broadcast system serving the Fort Wayne area. Studio awaiting further information. WOWO received this emergency announcement just moments ago. We have to verify, we did verify, with a special message in code, and this uh, is an emergency action directed by the emergency network, and directed by the president. Uh, we do not know the cause of this emergency notification, but we ask you to stay tuned. This is Bob Seavers. I'm checking the wires. I'll be with you the moment we have further information. We will cease all commercial messages at this time also.
We'll be right back. I feel good all under. No, I feel good all under. My Hanes underwear fits all under. Look, reinforced neck, double seams, and a waistband that doesn't dig in. What comfort. And the Hanes price makes my wallet feel good, too. Boy, do I feel good all under. Hanes makes you feel good. 99% of late period baby boomers, Gen Xers, and pre-1990 Gen Yers would agree that the weekly EBS tests helped traumatize them for life. Usually during Saturday morning cartoons or during the commercial break of a favorite family sitcom, we would have this thrown in our faces. And if it were a CBS affiliate, invariably you'd get the CBS eyeball of death staring you down to boot. Or if it was a station that was slightly behind the times, you'd be greeted with the long outdated Conalrad CD graphic. And for the coup de gras, if you lived in southern Minnesota, you hit the frickin' jackpot. You got both the CD logo and the CBS this evil is CBS. eye. Oh yeah, and anyone else remember these little bundles of joy? The clown will live. <laughs> he also will not sue. Good, great news. <laughs> And for you oh-so-lucky radio listeners, I am convinced that many a tender moment was thwarted by these tests. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. And now, the current darling of the airwaves, the Emergency Alert System. Instituted in 1997, the EAS introduced us to the now ubiquitous stew of duck calls. You know, <coughs> dual tone signal, graphics that look like they've been farted out by a Commodore Amiga that had a stroke, and usually the creepy robo-voiced announcement. Now, back on the duck call thing, it has been scientifically proven that these noises cause all water birds within earshot to become instantly sexually aroused. In fact, pre-recorded EAS tests are currently being used by conservationists to spike egg production in depleted areas. Okay, maybe I made that up. But I digress. Unlike the old EBS, where the tests would usually fall during commercial breaks, these new ones only occur during the climactic point of a really good show, or as I said earlier, at 3.30 in the morning on that one night you fell asleep with the TV on. And don't you just love the weather warnings? It's all very well, Mr. Holmes, but we're waiting. Yes, well, Colonel, in the first place it'll come as a shock to you to learn that... Oh, bite me. What now? Will you get on with that? <sighs> Son of a bitch. The National Weather Service in Denver has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Lincoln County and Cheyenne County in eastern Colorado. That's over 100 miles away PM, from here, Mountain and nobody Daylight lives time. there! At 7.40 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, National Weather Service Doppler radar detected a severe thunderstorm yeah. capable of producing marble-sized hail and damaging winds in excess of winds. 45 miles per hour. This storm was detected 25 miles east of Lyman, Lyman. east at 30 miles per hour. So it's moving away from here. Well, that's just brilliant. Winds, continuous cloud to ground lightning Lines. is occurring with this storm. Lightning is one of nature's number one killers. You don't Take say. Take shelter immediately. If no shelter is available, lie flat in a culvert or ditch. Wait, but you we said hail, flooding, lie face down in a ditch, in a flood? What, so you can drown while you're beaten to death? revolutionized the entire music. <laughs>
You know, just for once, I'd like to hear old Robo Voice get freaked out about one of these. Then maybe I'd care a little more. The National Weather Service and Denver has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Lincoln County and JM County in Eastern Colorado until 7.45 p.m. Mountain Villa time. I want my homie at 7.40 p.m. Mountain Villa time. Well, maybe not. But it could be worse. You ever seen one of Australia's EASs? Well, that does it for today. This has been a test of the emergency broadcast service. If this had been an actual emergency, you would have been informed to bend over and kiss your ass goodbye, but not before being given the runaround as to where to find information actually pertinent to your area. The broadcasters of America, in less than voluntary cooperation with the FCC and other authorities, have developed this system to make grown men curl up fetal style in the corner while sucking their thumbs and weeping like a little girl. This is a self-serving station.